Papanya, located almost in the middle of the Northern Territory with a population of 400 people. What makes this area so significant and why are the streets designed with these half circles? Hello and welcome to Our Facts in the Macquarie Collection. Papanya is located 200 kilometers northwest of Alice Springs and is situated on the edge of the Simpson Desert. Originally was established as a settlement mainly for the Aboriginal peoples of the Pantapi and Loretta group, forcibly removed from their lands for agricultural and government purposes. During the 1950s and 60s it had a turbulent start with cultural disrespect and sheer neglect from the government at the time that saw the settlement grow to 1100 residents. Papanya was not the only location with this kind of policy. So what makes this town so recognisable in the art world? Meet Geoffrey Barden, a school teacher from Sydney that helped create one of the biggest art movements to come out of the Northern Territory and cultural shifts regarding Aboriginal art and tradition. Geoffrey Barden started working at the Papanya Primary School in 1971 and he started encouraging children to paint traditional Aboriginal paintings for their school project. This was noticed by the men and elders of the town who were interested in painting traditional markings on canvas. One of the most influential artworks they did was a wall mural on one of the school walls called Honey Ant Dreaming by Billy Stockman, Kappa Jappa Jimpa, and Long Jack Chakamara. With the help of Geoffrey Barden, these three men created the dawn of the Western Desert Art Movement. It was revised several times afterwards before sadly it was painted over by authorities. The Western Desert Art Movement consisted of several Aboriginal artists who began using dot painting to depict their numerous dreamings on canvas instead of sand or perishable bark paintings. What made this different from previous forms of Aboriginal art produced was the lack of Western influence. As you can see in works done by the Hemingsburg Art School, which was famous for teaching the great Albert Namanjira. Geoffrey Barden was a big advocate in preserving the culture and art of the Aboriginal people in Papunya. The Western Desert Art Movement allowed the Aboriginal people's culture to become more mainstream and create financial opportunities for the artists practicing their technique. Papunya became the centre of not only the Western Desert Art Movement, but also Aboriginal rights. With the Whitlam government being elected a few years later, Australia saw a significant shift in how Indigenous Australians were treated with land rights and discrimination legislation passed. With the success of the Western Desert Art Movement, the group of Aboriginal men created the Papunya Tulla Group, being hailed as the founders of contemporary Aboriginal art. By the 1980s, Kappa Chinchumpa Chimpa, chairman of the Papunya Tulla Group, started allowing women to paint giving rise to the daughters of these artists becoming successful amongst the art scene. Female artists such as Emily Kame Kamwari became one of Australia's most recognisable female Aboriginal artists. So why are the streets of Papunya designed with these half circles? Well, the layout of the town is actually to represent the Honey Ant Dreaming design showcasing its cultural significance to the area. Papunya is still deeply involved in the arts with young Aboriginal artists that are training in the Tulla School learning one of the oldest forms of art still in practice today. If you like art facts and history, follow us for more content. My name's Adam McCurry and thank you for watching.